Ranting, reflecting, reasoning, reckoning. The Huddle. It is now 19 to 6 on the Huddle this evening. David Farrah from KiwiBlog.co.nz. Hello, uh, David. Hi, Larry. And uh, Cameron Slater from WhaleOil.co.nz. Hello, Cameron. Hey, Larry. Uh, David, you first. Jerry Brownlee is copping some flack over his comments about Finland, uh, where he said that Finland had worse unemployment than New Zealand, could hardly feed the people who live there, had a terrible homicide rate and hardly educates its, uh, educates its people. Uh, this has uh, prompted reaction in Finland, of course. Now Mr Brownlee says, well, he always carries a, a bit of Finland with him, of course, in the form of a Nokia a cell phone. What do you see in this? Oh, it's been such a beat-up, really, about nothing. I think the Finnish president's actually come out of this looking very well, sort of joking about it with John Key when John Key popped things into context. But, look, if Jerry had put out a press release or a speech about this, maybe you'd understand. But this was a raucous debate in the House where, because Labor's saying we should try and be more like Finland, of course someone's from Nationals going to have a go at Finland. Happens in every parliament in the world. And I think it's just amusing that it actually took Finland so long to get upset about it. How do you see it, uh, Cameron? But before I uh, ask you that, actually, here's here's the um, here's the parody off the uh, off the TV. Here it is. So I don't know if you're eating your third breakfast or your fifth dinner right now, but looking at the pictures we've seen here in Finland, I'm pretty certain you're eating something. I want to respond to your uh, comments about Finland because you are a significant person. By body mass index only, you measure up to three ordinary people. All right, what do you see in it, Cameron? Well, Jerry is a pie, is is a salad dodger, isn't he? Yes. I mean, <laughs> it's all a bit um, hilarious and, and and highly amusing. But what I've found uh, hilarious is that is the left wing defending a monocultural nation such as Finland here. <laughs> I mean, they even eat their own national animal, the bear. So, you know, is, is David Sheeran now suggesting we all go out and hunt kiwi and eat them or farm them or something? Well, well, with those comments, Cameron may have to apologise next. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, they're dining out on Brownlee's blubber instead of the usual main... Don't they still eat whale over there in Finland? I'm I th- not sure if they do, but they certainly eat brown beer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to me, I, I think you're right, David. Um, the reaction has been way over the top. I mean, Labour, I think it was Grant Robertson, got worked up into a lather of seriousness over the thing, for goodness sake. I yeah, mean, the, I saw it even went to the embassy and the MFAT and there were its changes, and that probably reinforces my view we could do with one or less, two less MFAT people if they're really well, worried about this. Yeah, it's it's really it is really hilarious to to watch all of this, uh, what I call faux outrage, because. I mean, people get outraged over all sorts of silly things. I mean, today we've got vegetarians outraged over an ad um, that uh, that one of the supermarket chains is running. It, it, it's it, people just get outraged over silly things, and this is another case of that. Right, that was the pack and save, out. pack and save, um, yeah, meat ad. Yeah, yeah. Just, just, I mean, just I, I'm I mean, for Meat Week. Uh, yeah, well, look, I mean, the parody in Finland has actually made us world famous in Finland, really, hasn't it? You know, which is... Oh, probably unique. boost tourism. Yeah. Uh, we'll come back in just a moment. David Farrah and Cameron Slater with me. News Talk ZB, it's now 15 to 6. News Talk ZB, it is now 14 to 6. Back with a huddle with David Farrah and uh, Cameron Slater. Uh, Cameron, to you first. Chris Cairns wins his libel case of the UK. This was against Lalit uh, Modi, called uh, Cairns a match fixer on, on a tweet, which was interesting. Uh, Coming from him, it is. Yeah, anyway, Modi couldn't uh, present any hard evidence, documented uh, evidence, so Ken's, um he wins his case, and I think it was £90,000 um, damages or whatever. What do you see in this? Well, he's probably not going to get any money, but um, I find it uh, highly amusing that anyone would accuse the, a New Zealand cricketer of, of match-fixing in any way, shape or form. I mean, what, are they paying them to take a dive? They do that by themselves. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. This was meant to be in the Indian uh, League. How do you view it, uh, Dave? I mean, the point here is that you know I had a lot of people lined up, a lot of people, former players, to say, "Yeah, uh, Kens was on the take." But the fact is, there was no hard, concrete evidence. Well, the judge ruled that. Those players who said he was on the take, he effectively said, were probably on the take themselves, and it was convenient. To <laughs> well, I think they were, they were done for that. Yes, those other players yeah. were, yeah. yeah. It's professional uh, sport, isn't it? It's like boxing. You know, it, we all don't 
surely there isn't a person left on earth who thinks that a heavyweight boxing match um, is a fair and honest fight. <laughs> I don't know. David, continue. <laughs> yeah, look, I think it's worth it from his point of view. It's cost him 400000 or so, but he would have made the decision that he wouldn't be employable probably unless he did go get that verdict. So, you know, he's probably not going to get a lot of money from it, but I think it does mean that he'll be able to keep earning money in the future. Well, he got his, uh, yeah, he's got his court costs paid for, supposedly, if Modi fronts up in that 600000 So, he, 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 um, you know, uh, he won't well, make a cent from that. He's gone bankrupt, though, I think. Yeah, no, 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 but that's over a security firm, and I think that's just a matter of sorting it out. He's got money. I don't think there's any question about that. Anyway, finally, Cameron, uh, the, uh, the ports and the employment court hearing now, now it's being reported, and I've had, it's interesting, isn't it? You know, the, mm. the, the texts and the emails already uh, for the last half hour or so, you know, accusing me of all sorts of things. And anyway, uh, what has actually happened here? It's been uh, reported that uh, the unions won big time here. Actually, what has happened is that the ports has, in good faith, in good faith, yes. pledged to pay these workers, some of the workers that would have worked guaranteed shifts between 3pm this Thursday and 3pm next Friday. It actually uh, goes uh, back to the Employment Court on Friday. That's right. Well, we've got no no actual injunctions. There's no victories. I see Gary Parslow's rushed out, as usual, claiming a huge victory for the workers and that the port is shut down till May, till May 16th. It's just a, a complete misdirection of what the actual facts of the case are. And when you, when you actually look at what... what the court is saying, they're saying, well, we're not going to issue an injunction here on on the fact uh, that that the uh, lockout notice is illegal. We'll wait and we'll have a hearing on that on Friday. Um, the port has said, well, okay, well, until we get to that point, we'll consider paying some money to um, to to the workers that would have been rostered on. But what the port's cleverly done is said, well, who are they? Because I'm hearing from some of my union um, sources that up to 80 of the um, of the striking workers have actually left either the country or gone and got other jobs. So mm. it's just interesting to see how many exactly the number that the union puts up to actually claim the uh, the payments. Right, David. So it's been adjourned, and uh, the company has um, has offered this this payment. Uh, that's all that's happened today. Yeah, uh, what do you see in it? Yeah, look, all this is is really a scheduling decision. There's no substantive decisions made. They've said we're going to make a decision probably next Friday on the lockout issues, but the real game is that hearing on the 16th of May. Um, After that, then it's all very much, I think, game on that unless the union can win their case then... um, the restructuring will occur. Thank you. That is David Farrer and Cameron Slater. Newstalk ZB, it's nine to six.